I've reflected a lot on what barriers were in the way as I went uh, through life up to and including uh, the campaign to be UN Secretary General. And I, I have actually come to the conclusion that virtually all the barriers were barriers of gender. Coming from my background, where I didn't see any barriers at all to what girls and women could do, partly because I had no brothers and growing up on a farm, that meant there were no girls' jobs and boys' jobs. The girls did everything on the farm. And that's the way I expected life to be, that there were no barriers to what you did. My interest in the world beyond New Zealand went back really to the childhood when my mother would ask us to put a little bit of our pocket money aside for work for the missions overseas. And then when I went to high school, I had a, a wonderful history teacher who exposed us to the reality of New Zealand involvement in the Vietnam War. By the time I went to university, these debates were raging on Vietnam, on apartheid, on nuclear weapons. And that's what stimulated my interest in becoming politically active. was quite unusual to be a woman in Parliament. When I was elected, there were eight of us, which was twice the number of the election before. So we were a very, very small minority. I think as women in peace, we did have to work a lot harder. I aimed to be a minister at some point in my career. Even getting there was, was rather tough. There was no expectation a woman could be prime minister. When I became leader of the opposition, it was really hard going because no woman had held that position before in New Zealand. And there was a lot of gender-based uh, uh, comment and criticism. And I believed that I could break through if I could you know, maintain the support to uh, keep at it, uh, which eventually I did. The great thing about New Zealand is that you do come up against barriers, but if you're persistent and can really show your merits, you will crash through them. There will be the people who really don't think women should be doing certain things. I think the key to coping is to have a lot of resilience, have that thick skin, and don't take it personally. Because once you start questioning your self-worth, <laughs> it's all over. You have to have a strong self-belief that you can do this. There just happen to be some, some barriers in the way. Some you can knock over, some you can't, as I found at the UN. Uh, but you have to create a platform that other women will be able to climb further on than perhaps you've been able to climb yourself.